All right, hey everybody in Facebook land. I'm here at Smith Paints in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I uh, got to sit down with these guys. Got the president of the company, Chuck Bruner, and Paul Scheidmetal, the director of something. <laughs> Industrial Coatings. Industrial Coatings director. And I'm sitting with these guys and I have the questions that you had sent in, which you were so uh, gracious to provide to me. I got 188 comments and 12 good questions. Well, I'm gonna take the time to ask these guys. You're gonna hear it from them. As a US manufacturer of coatings, they've been in business since 20, the company brand's been in business since 1929. Uh, Chuck's family bought it in 1972. Well, they have been making these products here for a while. Uh, good old American brand. In no particular order, Joseph Duke asked if you can explain product failure. I think product failure in that regard would be adhesion issues. Actual core product failure, that means that we haven't done our job in the lab, that means we haven't done our QC, that means we haven't actually created a formulation that is viable and that actually works. From the time we have a formulation to actually commercialize where we get into a contractor's hands, you're looking at a minimum of six months. And that's, so that's, that's fast quick. tracking. Yeah. The product failure we're going to be talking about here in this regard is probably going to be adhesion problems, not the core of the product itself. It's going to be surface preparation mm -hmm. and bonding issues. Do we have a bond breaker? Is there moisture? Do we have enough of a profile or a tooth to get the mechanical bond of these polymerized coatings in order to get the adhesion to the substrate? Okay, fair. The next question was from Justin Allen uh, regarding moisture. A true moisture issue is vaporized moisture. It's a gas that's emitting out of the substrate at a pressurized rate. What happens with a coating that is not able to hold back uh, moisture vapor transmission rate is that it can delaminate from the substrate, either taking the substrate with it or coming off on its own. It would use a moisture vapor emission primer to alleviate that issue. There are other types. Hydrostatic pressure is liquefied water at a pressurized rate, so think of like a broken pipe or a landscaping issue where water's coming underneath the footer and then pushing through. Or that's not what a moisture vapor transmission primer stops. They're not meant to do that. That's really all you're dealing with. So what truly, unfortunately, has been mistermed as hydrostatic, that's what the industry calls hydrostatic pressure is not hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is liquid water. As a manufacturer, I mean, to try to help a customer that there's actually a moisture issue causing a delamination. Is there a terminology that should be used for, like you said, a broken pipe? Liquid water is hydrostatic, which is a broken pipe or something along those lines. It's spraying underneath the building. Okay. Things that you can't control and you're not going to stop. Okay, and what's the other kind? It's a gas. You can stop the gas because all it's trying to do is equalize with the air. So we're just trying to stop that pressure from coming up at too fast of a rate. So whether it be sheet vinyl or carpet or hardwood flooring or another coating or whatever, it gets it to an acceptable rate that's within the tolerance of the system above it. Do you call that moisture vapor? That's moisture vapor. With regard to testing for moisture vapor, what's your guys' recommendation as a manufacturer of how you test for the presence of moisture vapor? There's no test that does any more than just test that point in time. What you're looking to do is determine whatever it is at that point. It can be a calcium chloride test, which if done correctly does tell you what the vapor transmission rate is. Relative humidity, although it does tell you something, does not tell you a transmission rate. It tells you quantity. So it's telling you what's there that could potentially come up. Okay, I guess we may as well stick on the topic of moisture and maybe being confused for something else, alkalinity. What is the test? Well, the test is, it's either a, litmus, a piece of litmus paper and distilled water, or you can use a pH pen. Properly cured concrete has to be between a 9 and a 12. Best rule of thumb is do calcium chloride, relative humidity, and a pH test. Take all of that information because those three together may point you in a direction if you're going to find a potential problem. And all we're trying to do is reduce risk. That's what you're testing. Yeah, because yeah. you want to know exactly what's going to be the interface for the chemical exactly. when you put the coating on. Okay, that's good stuff. Uh